Hello, I'm Genevieve George with Esri Canada, and this video is a start to finish workflow for creating a custom deep learning object detection model in ArcGIS Pro. Over the course of the next eight minutes or so, I will demonstrate the steps necessary to create a model all the way from collecting training data to using your model to detect objects in imagery. So to start, I have ArcGIS Pro open, and I have here a high resolution image of Miami from the NAIP imagery. So I'm going to zoom in and we can see that there are many anchored boats in the water. And that's what we're going to be detecting are these boats. So not the ones at the dock or moving around, but specifically those that are floating or at anchor. Now, the first step that I need to do to build a deep learning model is to collect training data. And I'm going to use one of the wizards that is available to help me collect my data in the right format for the tools I'll be using. So I have my image selected in the table of contents and I'm going to the imagery bar, then classification tools. There are a couple of different wizards here, and for this task, I'm going to select Label Objects for Deep Learning, which opens this new window. Now at the top here, I have the schema, and I can either choose to use an existing schema, for example, if I already had land cover classes or boat classes or something like that, but I can also create a new schema just by clicking the green plus and entering the name and value of my new class. So in this exercise, I'm only interested in detecting one type of object, which is these floating boats, but I could add other classes here if I was looking to detect different objects. Bottom here, I have my labeled objects. I haven't created any, so it's currently empty, but I can load an existing table of training samples if I want to add to it, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm selecting an existing feature class that I already have made of boat features. Now I'm going to add some additional features here and I can use these tools at the top to select my training objects. So there's a couple of different tools here, but I'm going to use the rectangle drawing tool because I think it's the easiest to use if you, if you are selecting an object that's kind of rectangular. So I'm just showing how to do this for the, a couple of the boats that I have here. And then once I've done that, you can see as I scroll down that the yellow colored ones are the ones that I just added. Then once I'm done, I can save it as a feature class by just clicking save here and I'm just choosing the updated file. Well, the next step is to format the training data for deep learning and we can do this within this wizard by going to the export training data tab. Alternatively, there's also an export training data for deep learning geoprocessing tool in the image analyst toolbox. They work in the same way though, so I'm going to just use, continue using the wizard. So I have my output folder, which will be a folder with image chips, labels, and metadata. And then I need to decide on my metadata format. I'm going to choose RCNN masks because we'll be using the R mask RCNN model later on. Then I'll leave the rest of the parameters as default and hit run. Now the choice of model will depend on what task you're trying to do and which model you are using later, since different ones require different metadata formats. Once the tool has run, I will end up with this folder that has image chips and metadata that is ready to be used as input to train the deep learning model. Back in ArcGIS Pro, I'm going to close the label objects pane and go to the geoprocessing pane and find the train deep learning model tool in the image analyst toolbox. Here, I need to set the input training data as the folder I created in the last step. So I'm just gonna go and find that one. And then I need to define a new folder for the model output. The warning here is just telling me that this folder already exists, but it's empty, so that's not a problem. Once the input training data is loaded, the model parameters will also become available to populate and you can tweak them as needed. But here I'm just gonna leave everything as default. So the max epox value is how many times the model will see the training data. So lower values will take less time and higher values will mean more training time. And the batch size depends on your computer's memory so it, it, the batch size is how many image uh, chips are being seen at once. The more memory you have, the higher this value can be. If you run into any uh, memory errors, you can lower this value. Then the chip size is the size of the clipped image chips that will be the input. So the default here works nicely. Um, but if we wanted to give the model more context for what surrounded an object, or if we're looking at very large objects, we could increase that. And then monitor here is set to validation loss which is a measure of the performance of the model. So that's just how it's going to be monitoring it. In the advanced section, we have further parameters that can be tweaked, but again, we're just gonna leave everything as the default here, and then we can hit run. Now, in the interest of time, I have already run this tool. So let's just take a look at what the output is. 
I'm going to go to my file directory and in this folder we have the model files including the DLPK file as well as the model metrics and model characteristics. So let's open the model metrics and see how the model performed on the data. Here we're given the training and validation loss curves, the precision score, and comparison of some sample results. So starting with the training and validation loss curves, the lower the loss, the better the model is working. And this result tells me that my model is probably overfitting to my data because the validation loss is higher than the training loss, but it isn't terribly different. Ideally, we would see these two lines converge, which would mean that our model is working equally well on the training data as the validation data. The decision score is 81%, which is pretty good, and the sample results are also pretty decent. They don't show any major issues. So overall, the model seems to work fine. It could certainly be improved, but in the interest of time, let's just go ahead and use the model as is to detect boats in an image from a different year. All right, so back in ArcGIS Pro, um, and since we created an object detection model, we're going to use the detect objects using deep learning tool from the image analyst toolbox. Now our input raster will be Miami 2019. So it's the same area, but for three years prior to the image used to train the model. And for the model definition, we'll select the DLPK file from the output of the train deep learning model tool. Then we can leave the rest as default and hit run. Again, in the interest of time, I've already run the tool, so let's just explore the results. The output of the tool is a feature class with a polygon around each of the objects that it detected. So we can see that it worked okay in some areas. It seemed to miss some boats, but it doesn't seem to have selected anything that isn't a boat. And then in other areas, it worked pretty well, capturing most of the boats in these regions. So there you have it. Just walk through all of the steps to create and use an object detection model in ArcGIS Pro.